What the f is all that mist? Look at the table cam. I don't know. What is that? It's round like. I don't know. Oh, I swear something's just moved then. What a weekend. That chair footage has gone sky high and we have got so many media outlets now contacting us wanting to pursue this story and it's something I think Brett and I still can't get over. What a moment. It was crazy. I, I said it on camera. I wouldn't have believed it had we not been actually watching the cameras at the time. Uh, it's just crazy. Something has happened here over the weekend and we don't know what it is but there is a vibe in the building Harry did mention something about activity occurring he's not in just yet he'll be along later so I'm sure we'll get all the gossip it's just an absolute hive of activity recently uh, we cannot explain it that chair footage has probably right up there with, with one of the best things I've ever seen personally and I know that you've seen as well. Yeah, it was crazy. This is the stuff that you see, like, in horror films. It was horrific. I don't know how I even brought myself to go over and pick that chair up. No. I, I think I was just, like, adrenaline. The footage of the chair moving in the old brothel last week had shocked everybody. And over the weekend, the activity had intensified with multiple reports of sightings in the downstairs bar people's glasses moving, and on Friday evening, an independent paranormal team witnessed another strange sound in room two, which is now starting to concern the team after multiple growls have been captured, as well as last week's direct voice phenomena. What was that? I don't know. Fingers, not that good night then. What was that? I don't know. Fingers, not that good night then. What was that? I don't know. Fingers, not that good night then. What was that? I don't know. Fingers, not that good night then. What was that? I don't know. Fingers, not that good night then. What was that? I don't know. Fingers, not that good night then. What was that? I don't know. The chair moving. Um, I'm. I'm I'm good that I wasn't there, that was phenomenal, but I said that I'm up early on a Friday morning getting the beer order in, so it seemed a little bit quiet, so I thought I'd go to bed. Yeah, it was. Little did you know. <laughs> to be fair though, Brett, it, it, you know, we were a little bored because Wednesday night had been so active, Thursday at the beginning was really active, and then it kind of went quiet for about three, three and a half hours, and then it was just that mist that seemed to form over the... And I admit, it doesn't really look that clear on the camera, but we could see it. We could see this swirling mist. Yeah, it, look, it basically looked like a lot of, you know, the dust particles we yeah. see on the cameras all the time that aren't orbs. Uh, but it looked like a lot of them, like hundreds at once, as if something had just shook a rug in there or something. Uh, so that, that was what caught our attention to it, but I, I don't know. It, I, I'm still a bit in shock over it. Monday night's guests check in at the hotel, and for David and Sally, who have stayed previously, this is their first of two nights at my haunted hotel. For the team, this week would be a case of expect the unexpected. What else could this building throw at us? It would seem that the previous occupants here had unfinished business. Hi, I'm David, and this is Sally. Um, this is our second time back here now. We just couldn't wait to get back, so much so, we're staying for 48 hours. Um, this is my 50th birthday present. I couldn't think of anything better to do, to be honest. <laughs> um, what can we say about this place? It's just phenomenal. This is why we decided to come back. Put the bag on the table. 
Christ, if this is going to be nightmares, I'll take it off the wall. That's a good deal, I'm sorry. Hey. That's a good deal, I'm sorry. Yeah. Still yeah, Brett's got a new t-shirt. Yeah, look at this. This is stunning. That is Absolutely really cool. love this. This is uh, traced over my handwriting. Uh, the ICU that I wrote before the voice read it out loud on the Intravox the other week. Uh, this was made by Sally, who is staying with us for two nights. Absolutely. This week. She, and she... not only now is he fed and watered for the rest of his life, he's now clothed. I'm, I'm moving in. He's been taken in from the deep, dark depths of Wrexham. <laughs> <laughs> Can you give us a sign that you are in the room with us? We have lots of lights on the floor. If you go towards one of them, we'll, we'll know where you are. Let me just show you the rooms. The rooms are all spooked out. Look at this. You'll look, you love this. Look at this. They are. I'll try and swing it round. Oh, there's a loo. Oh, wow. Hello. One hour in, and things seem quiet. We have eyes on all cameras, but there is no sign of any activity. All of a sudden, David in room six has a strange personal experience. Okay, we're an hour into the investigation. Very, very quiet here at my haunted hotel, but uh, David in room six suddenly started feeling excruciating pain in his back. He went out into the corridor and it went. Bit weird? I don't know. I, yeah, weird. I, next time I have a back, a bad back though, I'm gonna stand in the corridor, just in case. It's the magic corridor. Could be. I'm gonna try it. Come in, room three. Hello. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt the trouble. Uh, we, we were gonna come in and join you, but instead we would like to send you to uh, room four, please, to carry on your investigation there. Okay. Okay, yeah, Alright guys, it is time officially for the coin. Is Sally going into room two alone tonight? Okay. What do you reckon, Brett? What is it? No. I ah, know. spirits say yes. It's the voice that's weird, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> the, I watched the episode I, I found yesterday. It, quite exotic, actually. it was, it oh, was strange. No, everyone in the living room watching it the other day felt really uncomfortable. We send Sally into room two as per the coin's outcome. She will call out as David remains in room six as the vessel for the Estes method. Is anybody in here? Which I'm sure there is. If you could tell him your name. Can you make a noise somewhere in here? Or in one of the other rooms? Male voice like she's alone or... Something about this room. It's over there. I'm always drawn to. If there's somebody outside, can you come in? Oh, you are alone. Katie's just gone off. Hello? Have you come in to see us? Suddenly, a severe amount of electromagnetic energy fills room two, which sets both the EMF detector and REM device off. Meanwhile, in the brothel section, Harry, Brett and I are trying to measure any strange levels of EMF by the chair that had moved last Thursday night. Okay, it is a very quiet night here at my haunted hotel and Harry, Brett and I have now got the opportunity to head into the old brothel section here we have an EMF detector right next to the chair that moved and there are no abnormal readings at all. Everything is baseline, completely normal, which just again adds to the mystery of what happened last Thursday night. I wanted to bring Harry in here to show him. Obviously, 
you've seen these chairs a million times. But we came in and immediately expected it. And, and this, this doesn't easily move. It takes quite a bit. There's, there's only one wheel of the four wheels on it. So, so how did you even get onto it? Because it's obviously, you, in real time, you wouldn't normally see it, would you? So I, I saw it out of the corner of my eye, but it, I, yeah. I just saw something move. I didn't get onto the fact that it was the chair. You and know, then when we reviewed it back, it, it was. You know how when we watch the cameras, every now and then, and we see a dust orb yeah. past the camera, we go, whoa, something just moved in that room. What was it? And we immediately go, oh, it was, it was dust. Yeah. Uh, that it was basically that moment we were watching another camera I think we were watching the guys downstairs talking about how it would be you know better if they stood in this position for the, the footage and then all of a sudden Danny went what on earth is going on down there there was loads of dust orbs almost is what it looked like like a mist in the room right and then as we were looking at the cameras I'm like oh yeah yeah and then this thing just moves outwards we are halfway through Monday night's investigation and as is often the case with the paranormal, things are dormant and show very little signs of picking up. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear David. Happy birthday to you. We send Deborah into the cellar to conduct a lone vigil as Carl remains in the downstairs bar. David and Sally head into room five, which has surprisingly been very quiet over the last few days. All right, guys, I'm not gonna lie. It's painfully slow here tonight. Um, this is just typical My Haunted Hotel. One week it can be absolutely jam-packed. The next it can be really slow. So it's now time for a hashtag stories with Harry. Well, you put me on the spot here. Come on, look and think it. Just have to take the light. And it made me think that when I was on Most Haunted in 2014, there's like a group that follows them that's like Most Haunted off all the time. And he said, I'm a disgrace to the Greek community. <laughs> well, it's official because I've just had a Turkish delight. I am a disgrace to the Greek community. It's because you've eaten a Turkish delight, not because you're on Most Haunted. Greek Cypriots and Turkey had a big conflict, so they took over some of the island years ago. So we're not really meant to um, bother with the Turks, but I've just had the Turkish delight. But even worse than that, he was almost haunted. Would you like to come and say hello and speak to me? Do you prefer when we're on our own? Just knock or bang if you want to say anything. We'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear from you. <laughs> As the generator kicks in, Deb flees the cellar and meets back up with Carl. As they remain in the downstairs bar, we capture this. Was that you who made the bang? Would you do it again? So, so we know it's you? Nothing further happens and the next hour drags by, but this is a vital part of investigating the paranormal as these long periods of no activity make us appreciate the things that do happen. attempt a session in the old brothel to try and trigger activity. At this point, all guests have joined Harry, Brett and I, and I am taking stills on a full spectrum camera to try and capture the famous shadow figure. Who's here with us? Step through that doorway. Fifteen minutes pass and nothing seems to manifest, either via the white noise generated by the Intravox 
or on our full spectrum camera, suddenly something truly paranormal happens. If you're close, then speak. <gasps> what? What? Who knows? What? I'm a baby crying, man. I, I didn't hear anything. I can't honest to God, there's a baby crying. <laughs> Both Carl and I hear a baby crying above us, which is exactly where room 5 is, and our camera in room 5 captures the disembodied and completely unexplainable sound of a baby crying. This has happened on multiple occasions, and completely backs up our theory that a baby was buried here centuries ago. Ten minutes later, another amazing moment happens as I head into the red room to review the full spectrum pictures. A very strange moan is heard coming from directly in the brothel section. This causes major confusion, but we are able to confirm this is a disembodied voice. What was that? Listen to the difference in audio between the red room camera and the old brothel camera and you will clearly hear that this moan comes from within the old brothel section. Bangs, knocks, moans, K2s going off, babies crying. Off I've had the REM pod yeah. and the K2 going off. When I've asked questions, that it was a man and he's here to harm us. Yeah, um, Estes method felt like somebody was breathing down my neck and sat in a 28 degree room and it was like I had full goosebumps. I've actually got goosebumps. Yeah, the baby crying, obviously coming from room five, we think we've heard that in the past. What can you say? It doesn't get much better yeah, than that. We were all sat in view of each other. Yeah. And you hear the a baby cry from nowhere. We also thought we heard another baby crying, but some of us heard the words dad or daddy out loud, disembodied voice. The evidence, the the evidence and things that are happening, it, it, we've not had anything like this anywhere we've ever been. And just hope it carries on tomorrow. Well, well let's see what tomorrow brings. Just we just heard baby crying twice, didn't we? Yeah, um, expected. So yeah, yeah, um, probably quite productive, really. Yeah, so listening to the baby cry was um, like, well, it, <laughs> very unexpected on the way the noise was coming from, but it was really, really clear mm. um, to hear the baby come through. And I went, the moaning was, uh, again, not unexpected with the with what was happening at the time, seemed to come out of the blue. Um, but was really, really clear what you know, that it was a moan. Well, a tale of two halves tonight, we had an extremely quiet start to the investigation and it has ended in a very bizarre manner indeed. Yeah, hearing that uh, baby cry again but down in the brothel section was, was very strange. I didn't hear the second one because for some reason my head felt like it was going to explode. Well, it's we checked it back on the camera in room 5 and it is clear as day in room 5. But it's that noise that I groan or like 
It's like sexual noise. It did. So- all right. Yeah. There's no way how you're going to voice voice over this and go. Oh, this week at my haunted hotel, we heard a sex noise because that is kind of what it was, right? But as funny as it is, it was a brothel. Are we picking up on a residual sound of? some sexual noise however you know <laughs> it sounds so ridiculous but it was so clear i know look the, the things have happened tonight though it's been very strange again david and sally are now staying over and doing another one tomorrow night which is the first time that's happened here um we're back tomorrow night look let's see what happens again in this crazy crazy building It is Tuesday night at my haunted hotel, and after an investigation which provided evidence in the final stages, we were hoping to pick up where we left off. So room two has gone very strange recently, so we've heard the voice last week. Um, I allow a few people to come in here and do their own little investigation on a Friday, and we hear the growl, which you'll see as well. Ever since Lady Snakes tampered with that room in room 6, it's all gone a bit weird. Uh, it did have reports of paranormal activity beforehand, but something sinister is going on there now, and we're going to have to reassess how we keep this, the guests safe now. Um, at, at the first, it was a bit of a running joke when they were getting scared, but we really need to take this seriously now. Last night was brilliant. We had some really interesting but different stuff come through. We're getting used to a lot of stuff that's coming out recently, but we're hearing a lot of DVPs, direct voice phenomena at the minute, and it's very strange. This isn't being recorded through a spirit box or anything like that, or even using our Intravox. This is in the room with us, and it's getting very strange now. I've got a really interesting theory. It's bizarre, but it's all based around something called the stone tape theory, where the actual fabric of a building could absorb memories and significant events that happened during the past. Now, the beams used to build a lot of this building were used from Lord Nelson's ship. Could memories of the people on that ship and its past be absorbed in the ward, then transferred to this building? There are so many endless possibilities here, and we just need to delve into all of them. So I've always said there doesn't seem to be any negativity, any ghosts that are quite kind of evil in here. But recently, it does feel like negativity, especially in room two at the moment. Um, am I concerned? Obviously, I don't want anything to happen to the guests, but kind of a little bit of excited, the fact that it could be a little, something that might scare me a little. Last night was a good example of waves of activity. We have a lot of downtime here. There's, we can have three hours of absolutely nothing happening. And then all of a sudden, something clicks and all hell breaks loose. We have three to four bits of activity all clumped together in one moment. It's really interesting. Last, last week's episode was a brilliant example of this where we had the people all along the front of the building and everything was kicking off all at the same time. We have waves of stuff happening here, and we need to find out now what is triggering those waves of activity so we can get it to happen more. Look, last night was very interesting towards the end, but it was so slow. For four, four and a half hours, there was absolutely nothing happening. And all of a sudden, we just came together in the brothel section. We didn't get anything through the Intravox, but we just started hearing DVP, somebody moaning. And it sounds quite embarrassing, but it did sound like a almost a sexual moan. And that ties in with the fact that this was a brothel. We also captured a baby crying in room five. This is just so disturbing but it's also amazing to be able to capture these moments, but it just kind of backs up our theory that there was a child buried in part of this building and we believe that part to be room five. What happens tonight? Let's do this. This is David and Sally's second night at my haunted hotel. And we are also joined by first timers, Martin and Emma, another lockdown awaited.
Oh, for f**k's sake. That nails everywhere. <laughs> that would the same of the best. What? Look at that. Back in room six. I don't know if you remember us from last night. There's lots of lights. Lots of lights on the floor. There's lights in the corner. The boom box. June box. Boom. boom June boom. boom. Night two of my haunted hotel this week. We've got Sally and David staying a second night in a row, which will be interesting to see whether that kind of changes anything from normal. And then we've got two new guests that are so new to even the concept of My Haunted Hotel. They have not even seen any of the episodes, as far as we know. Boo! But they're just missing out. Boo! They'll learn. They'll learn. If you're going to come here, watch the episodes. <laughs> I've spoken. I've spoken. <laughs> What the hell did you just do? This is the freakiest thing. <laughs> <laughs> Interestingly enough, so at the end of last night, it was quite active, wasn't it? Um, they didn't experience anything overnight and neither did Carl and Deb. So again, it's been quiet. Let's see what tonight brings. It's hot again. Let's see your theory, see if it works. Uh, it actually has a bit of a, a thundery feel to it tonight. Let's hope it thunders off. As usual, the first hour is very quiet. But suddenly things go from quiet to just plain weird as we tune into room five. What's that? Oh, I don't want to stop what's happening here, what's happening? I... Th that... Yeah, how can I fucking play the Does he have any <laughs> 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 I think so! Is she wafting the smell away? <laughs> <laughs> get even worse as Martin and Emma move to room one. We are now deeply concerned about Martin's bowel movements. Mm. Just feels like he's like, Maybe he died, maybe Mary died of dysentery. Fearing another quiet investigation, we needed to push things. And so we send David and Sally into room two and Martin and Emma into room 6. After 20 minutes, this seems to trigger a response, and our light-hearted banter in the control room swiftly turns into serious mode. Something is about to happen, which causes great concern over room 2. If you go towards the mirror in the corner, we'll know where you are, clearly. Don't be afraid of the lights. They won't harm you. Oh, you big Okay, that comes from that that direction. Whoa, that's that side. You sure it wasn't there? Yeah, we've got some major knocking going on now. What knock again that way? Yeah, sounds like it moved. That sounded like being one. What was that? Oh my god! What was that? What is that? We heard a growl in there on Friday, but that was like Brett White, that That was horrible. 
Oh no, that's made me feel sick. Get Harry. Harry's uh, Harry's currently in the kitchen. We'll get Harry now. We need, he needs to see this. That is absolutely horrendous. One of the building's waves of activity suddenly hits, but what we have just captured in room two is of major concern to the team. Alright, Harry has uh, come back and we have shown him the footage which is deeply concerning at this point and I think you'll both agree uh, that that does not sound human and I've only ever witnessed something like that in, in another location that I do called Tatton Old Hall which is the, probably the closest thing I've ever come to to what you would suggest as demonic manifestation. Uh, which is not something I believe in, it's not something we believe in uh, as a team really, but that is concerning. It is, because obviously as much as you like the guests coming here, you want them to go home feeling safe and it just seems to be escalating that room at the moment, doesn't it? Do we need to start considering bringing in someone to do some sort of protection to that room? I know this sounds ridiculous, it sounds stupid me even saying it out loud, because I don't but is it something we might have to consider? We send Brett upstairs into room two and the activity doesn't stop. In fact, it feels like we have angered something. Yeah, because it just was like, what was that? What was that? What was that? What was that? sounded like, what was that? Just turn it off, that was just something. No, 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 it was like a loud dragging bang noise there. There? And again. The form of spirit box David is using seems to almost mimic Brett. Take a listen. Yeah, because it just was like, what was that? What was that? What was that? That sounded like, what was that? Uh, for reference to the camera, uh, Capel has just gone off. It's not in shot. Oh my oh! god! That wasn't me. That, that went, wasn't was you? That, that, was that not. went through the floor. That was not me. I oh! Jesus. Jesus Christ! What the f is going on? What's going on? There's bangs everywhere. Two huge bangs are heard coming from within room two, and one is so powerful it physically moves the bed that Sally is sat on. We decide to move forwards with caution and bring all guests together in the function room where we arm the Intravox device and I use the full spectrum camera. Is there a woman here? Madam, let us hear you. Tell us your name. Oh. Whoa. A female breath is heard, almost as if she is crying, but this is the only thing to occur, and we wrap up the investigation. Oh. Whoa. We've found today quite interesting, haven't we, with the bangs that we've heard so far. Yeah, the sensations. Definitely interesting. I think what we can't explain the most was the pressure when we were in room six of how we both felt really heavy. Yeah. Uh, a lot of heavy energy in there, wasn't there? Yeah, I was glad to get out of that room. I didn't want to go into that room to begin with. Um, and then we sat in the room and, yeah. I was getting more and more uncomfortable and had to leave. I couldn't work out whether it was cry out, cry out breath or it sounded more like To me, that's to me, how yeah. it sounded to me. It was yeah, like, like, real... like, it, like it was a shock. Yeah. Yeah. Like you would if you were just coming up out of water. Yeah. Where do we start? Um, absolute. It's been coming in waves, but when the waves have been come, they've been hitting big time. Some of the evidence we've seen here is in six years of doing ghost hunting we've never had anything like what we've had here. Yeah the last 48 hours has just been it's not disappointed has it? No not in the slightest. Yeah there was a noise that we didn't know whether what sort of noise because it was like a, a growl scrape yeah drag noise and then when Brett came in 
that was it then. Bang, no, bang, bang. Well, Danny radioed through and told us to be very careful because you know yeah. what what he's experienced in the past. He said it's not a good thing what they've just listened back to on the uh, on the recording. So Brett came in, a bit of extra security for us, um, and then it was the force <laughs> of the bang. Like lifted the bed. It was underneath the like camp bed that like lifted it. It was like it's like the floor had just been punched twice. It was we've in six years, as I said, we've never had anything like that happen to us. What we experienced while we've been here over the last forty-eight hours, we do have periods of basically not a lot going on. You will hear footsteps, the odd bang, but nothing major. But then you just sort of get this sense of something big is going to happen and when that big thing happens here it will knock your socks off it's unbelievable i think we're all a bit confused aren't we really over the last couple of days it's just been no activity to a sudden wave no activity to a wave yeah yeah tonight has been i said this earlier this building now even we're sat in the brothel section now feels like we're just sat in any building yeah it doesn't feel like there is any atmosphere at all yet earlier in room two i'm like jumping up and down in terror yeah that would that what's done it for me tonight is the growl heard and i, I am concerned boys i'm not gonna lie i'm concerned about it because that did not sound good yeah it is a bit worrying isn't it now and I'm very aware of the fact that we're sat here and that is the chair right there. <laughs> I'm trying not to think about it. I'm also a little bit worried that Martin's had in every toilet oh. upstairs. Um, and no doubt it's going to be me cleaning the toilet tomorrow. Oh, I'm not going to do it. There was something demonic coming out of his arse tonight, I'm not going to lie. The last 48 hours had not been the most active here at my haunted hotel but the activity in room two had been enough to make us think deeply about what is going on here. Wednesday night produced no activity at all, and as things stand, the building has fallen into a state of complete silence. Is this the calm before the storm, or will we now experience the period of no activity? We await to find out. What the f What was that? Oh my oh. god! That wasn't me. That, that went, was that me. You? That, yes, that went through the floor. That was